Marshall Mosier, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me on. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, I'm so glad we were able to connect and, and make this happen. Uh, we had a little bit of a technical snafu the last time we were trying to connect. And, and then lo and behold, in the pre-interview, we're just chatting and it turns out we're like really close to each other. Um, we we could have just met up in person, actually. That, that <laughs> we we, we could have. Yeah, you're, you're in Heber City, which is what, 25 minutes probably from where I'm sitting right now. Uh, yeah, but and actually with Utah Lake, I've been, um, so I, I work remotely out of a camper van uh, and I'll get more into that later on. But uh, I've been camped out at Point of the Mountain Campground because I'm doing a lot of paragliding training for a competition. That's probably what, like 20 minutes from you? Not yeah, yeah, 15, like... 20 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, very good. It, it, so you're quite the adventurer. I, I can't wait to hear more and, and learn more about all of that. And uh, listeners, longtime listeners probably know every now and then I tease that, you know, one of my dreams is to, to uh, have a camper van and just like travel all over the US. Well, we'll have um, to meet up in person at some point <laughs> after this so you can check it out. I um, uh, I work with a company called Van Do It that builds these camper vans and uh -huh. uh, yeah, helps empower people to get out there. But there's so many companies out there that are making these awesome vans and especially up at Point of the Mountain uh, and at the kiteboarding spot we were talking about, there's yeah. just like, you know, every other vehicle is some decked out epic camper van. Yeah, that, that is so cool. My wife thinks I'm crazy. We have six children. So the reality is this is not something that can come to fruition anytime soon. Um, but give, you know, give us another decade and then, you know, I'll be an empty nester or close to it. And then maybe we can make it happen. So <laughs> yeah, well, even as like a weekend vehicle, like for instance, uh, Billy, one of the kiteporters that I was just talking about has I think three kids. They were all in a big camper van. So yeah, so fun. Make it work. Yeah, very good. Well, we're not going to talk about camper vans today, though I actually <laughs> would enjoy that. Today, we're going to be talking about using virtual reality to develop and train teams. Uh, this is Marshall's area of expertise, and so I'm excited to pick your brain, Marshall, and learn more about this important topic. And really, I mean, as we talk about the future of training and learning and development in organizations, you know, generally, I, I think this is a really important uh, thing to focus on. As we get started, I wanted to share Marshall's bio with everybody. Marshall Mosier is the host of the Inside the Adventure podcast, a world record holding action sport poly athlete and tech futurist. As the founder and CEO of Vestigo, he's bringing his passion for adventure into digital world by building the future of virtual reality adventure, digitally recreating the world's most inspiring and daunting adventure environments. Uh, so interesting, so cool. And uh, I'm excited to, to pick your brain some more. Before we launch on in, anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of background or personal context? Yeah, so my, my passions are definitely at the intersection of adventure, technology, and entrepreneurship. And just like you were saying, um, we're, we're using virtual reality to recreate these opportunities to help teams get outside of their comfort zone through these crazy adventure environments that uh, you'd probably never be able to take your team actually to, like, for instance, you know, base camp and the Kumbu Icefall at Mount Everest, um, opportunities to really help teams push past their perceived limits in a similar way to like a ropes course style experience, but obviously much more epic uh, and just as impactful, even though we can't be together in person. So I really uh, embrace that uh, mindset personally as well. Like you mentioned with um, uh, adventure sport athletics, uh, being able to lead a lot of these VR sessions remotely means that I can work from a camper van. Our whole team is remote since, you know, virtual reality is a great tool to connect people. We use that for our team as well. And uh, I love being able to uh, lead these um, you know, really game-changing experiences for teams um, in what I do professionally, but then also be right next to, like I mentioned, Point of the Mountain, one of the most popular paragliding sites in the country, being able to train uh, in real-life adventure sports as well. So I love the intersection of the two. Yeah, that is so cool. And, you know, I, I think especially during the pandemic when travel has largely declined, though, you know, I think over this past summer, people were getting out and doing more traveling again, but still we're not back to pre-COVID levels and people aren't getting out as much or traveling as much. And there's more virtual and uh, dispersed teams all over the place, you know, as people went into more virtual work. And so having some sort of a mechanism to really get people together to do these impactful uh team development types of training programs and experiences, I, I think is just really, really cool. So I, let's start by just kind of picking your brain. I, you already mentioned kind of that one way that businesses might use virtual reality um, 
But how else are businesses, are you seeing businesses use VR to develop and train teams uh, to be more effective and, and more impactful? Yeah, so there's a lot of ways that businesses are using virtual reality in general, and L&D is really just one piece of that. So I like to explain virtual reality in, in a certain way for people who haven't tried it before. Um, if you can think of you know a totally sci-fi Star Trek style teleportation machine where it teleports you into a new environment, onto a new planet, whatever, uh, that's more or less virtual reality other than the fact that it's not real and it doesn't necessarily look real. It does look a little bit cartoonish, video game-ish, but it does actually feel like you've been teleported into a new reality so to go over some of these terms vr and ar so so kind of like the uh the star trek holodeck for example yeah totally yep it it really teleports you into a new into a new environment uh and that's what virtual reality is and if you've heard the term vr that's what that stands for uh that means that your entire environment that you're physically in is blocked out and you just see the virtual environment and when you move left and right when you walk forward and back when you pick up in you know objects it's all interacting with the virtual world not the real world around you then you have augmented reality which is slightly different people have probably heard the term ar where you still see the same world around you but there are things in that world that are not physically there that you're seeing virtually overlaid over that world uh, pokemon go is a great example that people you know used to uh you know play a couple of years ago when you use your phone as the augmented reality tool and you see that you know virtual pokemon running through the woods or something like that um, so with virtual reality, because it can replicate that feeling of being in a new environment, it also has the power to replicate uh, a lot of the emotional pieces that come with being in a you know, physical environment. And that could be just simply the power of being together in person with a coworker, whether it's for a collaboration um, tool, uh, you know, whether you're standing at a virtual whiteboard, doing a whiteboarding session for creativity, or just being able to get to know someone a little bit better by being in person. Uh, you can also stream your computer monitors into VR, so you can make your office space look like a regular office or like you know the beach or the surface of Mars with your, your computer screen floating in front of you. So all kinds of productivity tools, but also a lot of leadership development tools and that's really where we're focusing on so because of that feeling of actually being there it creates the same emotional reaction you'd have to an environment that induces some type of fear and from the world of experiential learning a lot of what i mentioned before like the ropes course style activities uh, that world of experiential learning has been around forever of using some type of challenge-based experience to help teams come together on a deeper level, bond through pushing through that emotional challenge, whether it's you know, fear of heights like the ropes course or something else, uh, practice communication skills, a lot of themes in leadership development that can be taught experientially. But in the old days, that had to actually be through a physical experience where your team was actually physically together. Now we can do the same type of thing, same type of emotional reaction that comes from these experiences, but for remote teams, because the ropes course, instead of being a ropes course, is you know, uh, a big crevasse at the base of Mount Everest. Like I mentioned, one of our experiences is this crevasse crossing experience where the first step in climbing Everest is getting across the Kumbu Icefall, this big glacier that has these big cracks in the ice. And the way that climbers actually get across these giant glaciers is with this ladder that goes across, you know, spans this, you know, a couple hundred foot wide crack in the ice. And it's one of the most dangerous pieces as well. So we recreated that in virtual reality. And Physically, you're just walking in a straight line on your living room or office floor, but your brain is telling you, I'm on this ladder over this crevasse, and if it breaks, I'm going to fall to my death. Like, even though you, your, your logical part of your brain knows it's not real, your emotional part of your brain reacts in the same way if it actually was real. And that's the emotional piece that makes the learning from the L&D perspective so much more impactful in that experiential learning way. Yeah, yeah. And, and experiential learning is so powerful. I'm a big believer of experiential learning in a more corporate environment, but as well as in the university space, giving students, giving employees the opportunity to really have the lived experience doing, you know, and practicing um, what it is you're trying to, to help them develop the skills, the competencies or whatever. It makes a big, big difference. <clears throat> and, and doing it in this way with this tech enhanced, you know, VR and AR kind of uh, programming, I, I think is so, so cool. Uh, and I, I think, um, I, I think the, the tech has also come a really long way. So uh, for some of you who may be listening, you're thinking, oh, virtual reality, you know, I tried, I tried, you know, wearing the, the goggles and doing something, you know, a couple years ago. Uh, it's, it's gotten so much better. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how things have developed 
uh, in terms of just the available technology and what the feel is. So, so for example, I'll, I'll just use myself as an example. I remember the, the first time I ever did it. Yeah, the first time I ever did it was maybe five years ago. Uh, and it would, I would get like big headaches and it just, it wasn't that impressive. And, you know, just, I haven't done it super recently, but probably a year ago. And it was so much better um, just over that period of time. Tell us about that. Exactly. It's come a long way. And just like you mentioned, a lot of people have tried VR a few years ago and assume that it's the same rate of change as, you know, the current smartphones, like a oh, slightly better camera, you know, new iPhone, that kind of thing. But it's actually leaps and bounds better every single year because the tech is so new. Like imagine, you know, going from a Razer phone, BlackBerry phone to the iPhone being unveiled. Like it's just the next generation of a phone, but it's a completely different device. That's what's happened in the past couple of years in virtual reality. So massive improvement. The latest VR headsets are these things. This is the Oculus Quest 2. There's a couple other brands out there, but Oculus tends to be pushing the, um, uh, the bar a little bit higher than most. And this is a completely standalone headset, which means I don't need a computer or any external processing power to run this headset. And that's a really big game changer. So Five years ago, uh, VR headsets really needed an external computer to process them. And by external computer, I mean like a beefy gaming computer. Like you had to have like a multi-thousand dollar Alienware laptop or a big desktop Microsoft you know, Windows computer to run it. Uh, and now it's all done in the headset itself, uh, which is a game changer because... Most people um, aren't going to know how to set up the big complicated system. You had to have cameras in the four corners of your room called lighthouses that tracked where you were. Now those cameras are actually built into the front of the headset itself. You see these four cameras on the edge. So it's come way further along than it was before. And it's created a very consumer-friendly, cheap headset to the point where anyone can use it. And that's really the big game changer in the world of virtual reality that is sparking mass adoption. So VR was really this niche gaming tool before where the people with the hardware and the you know, technical expertise would figure it out. But now, um, you know, every random, you know, everyday kind of random people who aren't into gaming or aren't into VR are buying these mostly as, you know, presents for their kids. And then they'll, they'll put it on and be like, wow, this is amazing. And I uh, realize it's got a lot more potential than just as a, a tool for video games. But companies now are also buying these in massive quantities as a tool for remote work. Of course, COVID has uh, forced a lot of companies to be fully remote, but even in a future that is COVIDless, hopefully that future ever comes one day, um, remote work is still here to stay in some capacity, whether it's a hybrid approach or fully remotes. Uh, and having this as a tool for connecting teams, both on the L&D side and just on the team collaboration and meeting front side, uh, is really going to be as much of a must-have as a personal computer and a cell phone is now. It's getting in that direction. It's not quite there yet, but in the next five years, I think it will be. Uh, and the price point of these headsets, you know, it's $299 for the latest headset, um, which the company who makes this, Oculus, which is owned by Facebook, the rumor is that they actually... Um, uh, produce these for a little over a thousand dollars and they sell them for 299 so they're heavily subsidizing the hardware they're actually losing money in the software uh, because they want to uh, increase the rate of adoption and they, they make that money back on the software side um, so it's really a no-brainer for individuals and companies to get them uh, at the current price point and it's such a powerful tool that enables a lot of things couldn't be uh, done before yeah, that's so cool. Uh, so let's talk a little bit more about this. Uh, for example, in the tech industry, how how do you see um, product teams using VR to innovate within the tech industry space? Yeah. Um, so any benefit to in-person collaboration uh, is definitely a... Um, uh, you know, a factor of virtual reality. So for product teams that are just more creative, communicative, communicative, collaborative in person, virtual reality is going to empower that in-person feeling for people who can't be in person. Um, it allows everything from sitting around a virtual conference room to being at a virtual, you know, whiteboard uh, that you can um, you know, draw virtual diagrams on, but also you can create 3D virtual, um, you know, images in, you know, holograms in front of you uh, to be able to, you know, see things from a new perspective. Um, augmented reality can also do that for um, you know, in-person teams. Think of kind of like, you know, Iron Man's desk where he has these floating 3D holograms in front of him. Well, that that's a, a not too distant future uh, reality in 
augmented reality, but also in virtual reality, it's even easier because your whole environment is virtual versus just the hologram in front of you. So all kinds of ways that can empower collaboration. But really the biggest benefit of virtual reality, like I mentioned before, is the, the ability to teleport you and your coworkers into an environment together. Right now it looks a little bit cartoony, a little bit video game-ish, especially because the processing power is just in this instead of a big fancy gaming computer. But eventually as that processing power gets better and eventually they're actually gonna put 5G tech in the headsets and do the processing in the cloud in real time off the headset, that'll be a game changer as well. Um, so in the next five, 10 years, it really will feel like you're teleported into an environment with your actual friends, coworkers together in the same space without having to get out of your pajamas. Which is incredible. And so again, you, you use the Tony Stark example, but I also think of like the Avengers and um, I'm trying, I don't remember all the, the terms of the group, but like the, the head group of all the people with with uh, Nick Fury and they're all meeting, but it's virtually, but it feels like they're all in the same oh, right. room, right? Yeah, so the shield people. The shield people. Like, so all that yeah. kind of stuff is going to become more and more uh, an opportunity and a reality. Totally. So I, I can pop on the headset and feel like I'm sitting in the same room with people, even though I'm just at home in my home office and we get all those benefits of being together, uh, even though we're not together. I, I think that's, exactly. that's really incredible. Um and coming back to the point I made about the whole headache thing, I, I know, you know, early on in particular, that was a concern with the current tech. What are we seeing in terms of like, how long can I be in that virtual space wearing the, the goggles, um, the headset without like having it have some sort of a negative yeah. impact? So it's, um, it's completely, uh, you know, dependent on the individual, um, it's not super comfortable to be in for more than like three hours at a time. That said, there was a guy not too long ago that spent a week straight in virtual reality. Like he actually slapped in the headset, which that can't be very comfortable, but uh, it's definitely possible. And then the older headsets for anyone who's tried VR and say, oh, I've got motion sickness. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't work for me. That was actually the older version of the headsets. The new headsets do not cause motion sickness. Uh, and there's one key reason. The old headsets were actually not virtual reality headsets. Uh, most people have tried what's called a 360 video viewer and it technically has the term virtual reality because virtual reality is very generic it just means any environment that's virtual but these older headsets were fundamentally different from these newer headsets in one key way they don't let you move around uh 360 video viewers if you had you know the, the thing where you put your phone in like this headset and you put it on your head that's like i think of like an igloo um tv screen you're right in the middle of this bubble and you can look around and see things from all around but you can't move around in that environment you're still a passive viewer and if you do try to move around in that environment you moving physically is not going to correlate to you moving in what you're seeing and that's what creates motion sickness whereas this when i take a step forward in real reality i actually take a step forward in virtual reality the two motions are aligned in my inner ear which doesn't create motion sickness um, so that factor has already been solved for, uh, the comfortability piece, they keep making these like, you know, inside, um, things that, you know, they make them comfortable, you know, better, better every year. But the really key factor is when VR gets to the point where it's the size of a pair of glasses, like what you're wearing, you know, you could wear a pair of glasses all day long and not have it, um, be that uncomfortable. And eventually this is still sci-fi, but apparently people are working on it. Uh, VR and AR contact lenses, um. Who knows one day, um, but so, uh, so that, now we're, happen. yeah. So that, I mean, now I'm thinking like black mirror kind of stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's cool. fun to think about. Um, but I also think of uh, the new, the, the Ryan Reynolds movie where he, he's in a video game, but right. He puts on the glasses and all of a sudden it's augmented reality. Um, you know, that he's, he's, he's seeing all these new things because now he's a player in the game. Um, so that yeah. kind of stuff, like we're just getting closer and closer. And I know it still sounds very sci-fi ish, um, but I mean, we're really not that far away and the processing power, the processing speed, the cloud-based stuff, like you're talking about that, that's enabling, uh, the rapid, uh, advancement of this. And so we're, we're talking like nearly exponential, like progress in this area. Yeah. Um, it's, this isn't incremental, like you were saying with like the new cell phone release, this is really uh, steep progress. It's going, it's moving really fast. Uh, and there's a really interesting uh, Elon Musk interview actually about whether or not we are currently in a, you know, virtual reality simulation. 
uh, which there, there's a compelling theory uh, that says statistically we're more likely to actually be in a simulation right now than not because assuming any rate of change of virtual reality getting better and better over a time period of, you know, indefinite time period, assuming humanity exists in tens or hundreds or thousands of years, uh, then eventually we'll get to the point where the simulation is indistinguishable from real life, like the matrix. Um, and statistically, it's more likely we're already there than not. But uh, yeah, you, you can go as deep into that rabbit hole as, as you want. Yeah, oh, well, that, that's so fun. Uh, okay, well, I really appreciate all the insights in, in the background in terms of the tech. And, and it's so cool to think about how VR is going to help shape team development as people spend less and less time on site together in the same physical space, but doing more and more virtually or, you know, in hybrid kind of work arrangements. Um, and so for anyone listening who you're thinking, wow, this just really sounds like far in the distant future, pie in the sky kind of sci-fi stuff. Uh, the reality is we're getting really close uh, and, yeah. and, our, and already there's so many good capabilities that we can do with this technology. And uh, so I would encourage people to, to kind of challenge your assumptions and, and maybe try it again and, and see if this might be something that can help your teams. Well, yeah, Marsh, Marshall, it has been a real pleasure. Uh, the time has flown by. This has been a really fun conversation. Uh, I want to make sure that I give you uh, the opportunity to get back to your busy day. But before we close, I wanted to let you share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Yeah, thanks, John. Well, just like you were saying, I really encourage everyone to get out there and at the very least try a headset, you know, find a friend who has one of these or bought one of these for their kid. Uh, even if someone doesn't have access to one, uh, a part of what we do is actually send these headsets uh, for the, uh, the in, uh, you know, kind of like the initial interview with the company so that we don't just talk about what we do, but, you know, we'll have the, the few people that uh, direct L&D for a company actually in a virtual space together. We'll ship you a headset. So anyone who's listening who wants to try it, um, we're happy to uh, give you a free demo and show you what it's like. But uh, you can find us at vestigo.co. And uh, really happy to help any team, whether uh, partially remote or fully remote, that wants to leverage virtual reality in any way. Uh, excited to help you get there. Perfect. Thank you so much, Marshall. It's been a pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Marshall and his team can do for you. Uh, check out VR and, and try it anew and, and see if this might be a, a good answer to some of your learning and development challenges in your organization. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.